Welcome back once again to Road to Responsible. My name is Lucian Lewis, founder and owner of Responsible. We are here continuing our journey of creating um, ways to show the design tools and the AI that can be implemented into creative processes. I've been along the journey so far. We've been able to create AI versions of our historical figures from the likes of Mandela, Marcus Garvey, Obama, and more. And from those interviews, we was able to create a harmony map. And the harmony map allowed us to find the trends in the different, you know, um, people that we was able to connect with. And now we're gonna continue to take from what we created with those trends, the journey map, the connection statement, and how might we, these are tools that we are able to use that are usually utilizing a design sprint. And this design sprint is what people use to kind of come up with creative ideas and connect and back their ideas with research. So I wanted to share this process so that people can utilize it in their own creative advancements and their own creative experience and expression. Um, so where we left off was after creating a connection statement, we was able to address the, uh, how might we, uh, the connection statement was Activists experience pride in their cultural roots when they are able to unite their community and gather support for their shared cause. Uh, how might we statements to address that was how might we strategize a plan to showcase the full experience of preparing activists for what they're up against. So these are, you know, showing how we can break down that information that we got from our interviews and be able to have them as constant references and constant pieces of, you know, um, breakdowns that we can always be having our um, creative process on track. And, and now that we created that, we built a journey map, which would be another reference and another explanation so that we can um, further understand how we can add on to what we have already done. We are at the point of now turning this journey map and creating a further detailed persona of our character, Theodore Mzanzi. So we figured out from breaking down our harmony map that there's certain phases that Theodore Mzanzi will go through from uh, phase one being uh, learning about his ancestry and then also after learning about his ancestry, recognizing the antagonization of the people that look like him and how the history of being antagonized was that led into you know, a conflict of being, you know, very prideful of himself, but also recognizing the oppression. And that led to a aspiration for, you know, wanting to position himself better and his people better. And that led to activism, which finalized with some level of achievement. So we decided that in his achievement, he would be, you know, experiencing more of the type of success that was found in the likes of a Nelson Mandela or Barack Obama, whose uh, approach was a lot different than our other interviews of Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X and Angela Davis. They were more so on the self-sufficiency and more so attitude of wanting to build for themselves and separating from the oppressor's culture versus the likes of Nelson Mandela and Barack Obama had more of a vision of assimilating and joining forces and you know being able to find equality through that path. So, we're going to now further along build how this may play out if the approach that uh, Malcolm or Marcus Garvey had the same type of success and support as the Nelson Mandela and um, Barack Obama's path has been. So let's start off by giving um, an overall view, a profile name, you know, filling out these inserted areas of age, location, career, needs and goals, frustrations, and behavior so that we can get a full represent representation and reference of Theodore Mzanzi. So we have his name already. That's kind of, that's kind of figured out. Um, I'm going to just look at my uh, notes here uh, as I go through this just so that we uh, can just be on the same page. I have the harmony map pulled up so that I can just add some information and I'll also be able to pull some information from our journey map here to fill out this section. So um, we're going to give Theodore Mzanzi the age of, let's say that he's currently 55 because we want to show that he went through a process of, you know, experiencing 
what it is to become successful as an activist and to be successful as activists that focused on sustaining more of a, you know, a, a self govern and self sovereign type of uh, representation and uh, a, a level of community organization that was more for the people that needed it the most. So we have an age for Theodore. Let's say that um, he, we have to build out his whole, you know, identity here. So let's say that he is, you know, originally from, maybe he's a first generation American, but he's originally from South Africa. And we'll say that he has returned back to South Africa. So let's say that he's in Durban, SA. That's where I am currently, so that's kind of where I'm drawing that inspiration from. But uh, his career is would be an activist and community organizer. And let's say that he has like a modest salary, not nothing too, you know, not nothing too advanced because he's focused more on, you know, the community organization. And he does have resources in order to, you know, complete his missions, but it's not for himself. So maybe he's just, you know, around... Let's say 70 to 80 a year, 80 grand a year. And that's uh, quite a lot if you're living in South Africa. If you're able to amass the amount of money that, uh, you know, of 80,000 of a salary of that and be able to live in the place where the currency exchange is favorable to the dollar, that can work out favorably for, you know, Theodore. So um, just to further this, let's add our picture of Theodore. And then let's go into adding the the bio. So um, we have an idea of now that he's going to be born in the U.S. So let's say that he's born in the U.S. Where he is, where he was a first generation descendant from some native uh, Zulu parents. So first generation Zulu descendant. Okay, so we're uh, we're gathering that from our harmony map and our ancestry section. So this is how we're going to be able to build this out. Um, so he's born in the U.S., where he was a first generation Zulu descendant. Let's say that um, while in America, he learned about. Let's say, because uh, he has his heritage, he knows his heritage and he knows the importance of it, but he was born in America, so he can learn about his original, you know, heritage and clan names through his parents. Clan names and heritage through his parents. So he learned about that through his parents, but original, let's say that he... Also, um, in also, but in his studies, but in his studies, he also was influenced by civil rights activists. So he understands that there's a level of strength in his identity, and they also had a level of fight in the you know the struggle back home in South Africa. So he's recognizing that, but he's also tying it in with the history that he's learning in America of the black uh, African-American struggle and the civil rights leaders that, you know, was able to, you know, bring some level of justice and from different approaches. So we're going to say that he was influenced by that. And right now, currently, when he was, you know, growing up, the conditions was maybe, let's say the conditions of the U.S. was was changing from um, outright systematic outright systematic uh, racism no out, out, outright ra racism to more of a subtle systematic oppression more of a systematic oppression which was identified okay we can say that 
he, you know, because we're trying to gather this from our information. We don't want to lean too much more on our on our imagination. So the conditions of the U.S. was changing from outright racism to more of a subtle systematic oppression. So this is because he's witnessing the fight of the civil rights and how that's changing, you know, the aspect of how the oppressions can no longer just um, be outright racist as they was in certain segregation days. So now they have to inf uh, put the oppression in more of a systematic way. And he's identifying that through his own experiences, maybe. Um, yeah, so he uh, was identified through his limited... His limited... Opportunities. So could be, we got from Malcolm, I think, in some section... Uh, that there was limited opportunities in um, their their uprising or uh, in their uh, you know identif identifying themselves and being antagonized. There was a level of limitations that was being experienced. So that allows us to see how we can further build this. And again, uh, Theodore is moved back to South Africa. So let's make this the reason why you know he this led. Theodore, Theodore, to return to South Africa. Um, to connect Africa with what to connect with what he was taught about. To connect with what he was taught about his clan, to return to South Africa, this led Theodore to return to South Africa to connect with what he was taught about his clan names, his clan and original heritage, and how they operated outside of American, you know, uh, influence. So this is a catalyst um, for him to get closer and get more in tune with his identity. And we want to say that, you know, this is what began his uh, activism because this is his response kind of, you know, and we've seen in our situation that there was an the ancestral antagonization, then he started to aspire from uh, to have a better situation, but he had to, you know, inform himself of how to do that, building a pride and self-sufficiency and independence. And you have to get connected to, you know, where that is existing. And it does exist back where he's uh, originally from. So he left America, went back to South Africa, and he began to maybe organize ways to gather the information mm, and support to better the situation for people like himself. So I think this people like himself is centered towards people that are, you know, not as attached to their identity or their true identity and more assimilated into a culture that isn't their own. And it's not by their fault, it's just they have lack of education and lack of understanding of their truth. Um, and he is blessed to have, you know, um, a level of understanding from having the parents that were taught, was teaching him about his truth and his true heritage. But he sees that there are people that are without that and that's kind of stopping them from, you know, um, building a, a for their own and having a more of a self-sufficient uh, way of going about organizing their culture and their identity. So in that process, we can say he found this, this driving from our level of wanting to lean more towards uh, the Marcus, Do Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X approach. Uh, we're going to say that, you know, he found success in bridging a gap, okay, I like this, a gap between the African American and native African people to 
you know, uh, he found a, a, some success in bridging the gap between the African American and Native African people by sharing his story and leading, okay, this is beginning his activism, leading the supporters to understand the power of the power in unity group um, economics economics and self sustainability okay so we have a good bio here that sh represents um, what we want our character to now be pursuing. So each other amongst each other. So self-sustainability amongst each other. Rather than relying on oppressors culture. So uh, this gives us a full look at what, you know, built Theodore Manzanzi's pet. And this is uh, being driven from our harmony map, our, you know, um, our also our journey map. And it's addressing our connection statements. So we are using all of our tools that we have collected along this design sprint process to create a persona and a, rep and a reference that we can tap into whenever we want to create going forward. So... From this, we can continue forward and build upon uh, his person personality traits in this, which will probably lean towards being, you know, uh, resourceful, resourceful. Um, let's say he's disciplined, disciplined, and um, he's also what's community orientated. I guess he's. Uh, uh, this leader, lead, uh, respected, very respectful, uh, yeah, let's say respected, respectful, resourceful, disciplined, and respectful is his, you know, personality traits. So we're building a character and it's getting, you know, uh, us ability to now understand how we can, you know, have a constant way of creating for somebody that is similar to our, you know, uh, figures that we interview for this process, but it's our own version that will allow us to be, you know, use our imagination and create for a more uh, approach that is a blend of all of what we have learned so far. So let's go further into what Theodore's needs and goals along this journey is, and uh, we're going to continue to draw from our Harmony Map. So what he needs to do is, uh, let's say, strengthen. Yeah, he needs to strengthen his communities. Strengthen his communities' um, understanding of the power attainable mm -hmm, when Africa and African Americans come together. So this is more of drawing from Marcus Garvey's, you know, approach of wanting to, you know, unify and be like more of that Pan-African approach, you know, uh, build a nation of, you know, black wealth, black um, identification, this black nationhood. Um, so I feel like that's one of his needs and his goals. Secondly, he wants to become possibly a symbol of successful Sorry, and positive spelling, a symbol of successful, become a symbol of successful and positive change without, this is a big uh, factor, without the compromise, without compromising to assimilate. without compromising to assimilate into the oppressor's culture. So that's a key aspect as well that's different than uh, the likes of 
uh, Barack and Nelson. Um, and I believe we saw that Nelson, you know, started more so of wanting to, you know, have an armed struggle. But he, after his time in prison, he, you know, started to get into the realm of wanting to find other ways, more diplomatic ways to solve his problems. But the aspects of, you know, Marcus Garvey and uh, Nate, uh, Malcolm X, Angela Davis, they more so was wanting to fight against the power structure rather than joining forces. So, um I think uh, lastly in our needs and goals, we need to want to create a um, way of educating. And I feel like they all did this work, you know, especially Angela Davis. She was a community organization and focused on like youth uh, of upbringing and like, you know, changing the minds. And even the Nation of Islam, they are all about training, you know, the next generation for continuing this work and this representation. So creating a way of educating upcoming generations about the true African heritage and make it accessible. So they wanna make that truth accessible to more people. And I feel like that's a good amount of needs and goals. So. We have an idea of where we're going with this. Uh, we're going to build on the frustrations and behaviors now. So um, Theodore has the frustrations of experiencing, you know, uh, levels of oppression. And maybe that's also because of, you know, um, the work of people identifying like him experiencing what is going on in America and some of the people not having that connection to their roots, they more have an aspect of a simulation and that could be frustrating, you know. So the lack of appreciation maybe, um, of the lack of appreciation for true heritage due to the masses assimilating into the oppressors into the oppressors pursuits okay so this speaks to us wanting to get away from you know the uh individualistic ways that you know America kind of pr uh, pr proposes is the way of doing things and not a community aspect they have you know people that are you know examples of how to work as a community, but those weren't always, you know, ending in the most successful path. More of the people that are considered a success in America have uh, to follow along assimilating to the capitalistic or oppressive ways, which I wouldn't say the capitalistic way isn't a bad thing, but it has to be, you know, prioritized first that you're doing this as a collective. So uh, putting, forth, putting forth the group economics would be important. Um, let's see what else there is. The we saw that the antagonization, there's also that level of um, the, that uphill battle, you know, the constant uphill battle to find, the constant uphill battle to find resources without the re. The, the, the constant uphill battle to find resources and maybe um, the limited opportunities. We can speak to that. Opportunities. A constant uphill battle to find resources and opportunities without compromising his own core beliefs and values. Okay? So this is also a level of frustration that is uh, he's finding in the States. And when he gets to um, South Africa, I'm pretty sure that there are levels of um, frustrations, but it's more resources that are aligned because of him being able to connect with people that have more of a recogniz recognition of um, what they can do as a nation. And him being Zulu especially, that's a strong, um, you know, clan in the uh, South Africa parts. I know from living here myself um, that they have a lot of pride in what they can do. So um, next, we need another frustration. Let's say the difficulty 
this is a good uh, idea. Let's say because of, you know, the, the viewpoint of African-Americans towards Africa versus uh, the, in the opposite way uh, of Africans to African-American is kind of painted by media. So let's say that that's also a difficulty. The difficulty to explore outside of the boundaries of international, of the boundaries shaped, okay, by international um, media and the perceptions it paints of native Africans and African Americans toward let me see. Let me see if this is reading right. The difficulty to explore outside of the boundaries shaped by international media and the perceptions it paints of Native Africans and African Americans. Yeah. So that ties into another frustration of why you know there's lack of connection. So Theodore wants to be a leader in building that bridge, and you know we are building on the fact that um, we seen you know the likes of success. And, you know, the assimilation from Nelson Mandela, I've actually heard a story recently of somebody that was at the inauguration of Barack, of Barack Obama as well. So I meant to say Barack Obama, the, somebody that was at the inauguration of Barack Obama and the overwhelming feeling that they got from, you know, experiencing, you know, the fight up until that moment of going through the civil rights being, um, this is an elder that I was talking to that's uh, been both in the apartheid struggle and in also the, you know, the civil rights struggle and how once they was at the inauguration, the amount of overwhelming, you know, uh, feelings that the whole place shared was, um, you know, very felt, uh, you know, heartfelt. And it kind of was just a very good symbol of what, you know, would be possible when you are reaching a point that you never thought that you would. But imagine if that um, that symbolization was more of not the path that was towards equality and, you know, um, of, of unity with the oppressor's way of doing things, but more so, you know, that passion that you would get if you was able to build your own. So we want to, like, take that success and now add it to, you know... Um, this different path, this different approach. And I feel like leaning towards that will give us a way to create now with this reference to kind of emote that same feeling of success, but more towards like if uh, Marcus Garvey felt that level of, of, of success that a Barack did or a Malcolm X felt that level of success or their movements did and what the world would be like if that happened. I think that would give us a unique way of exploring um, you know, our creative, our creative uh, content once we finish uh, our design sprint. So we're going to go into behaviors now. Let's uh, finish up with our behaviors and our tagline, which is going to be um, just something that is uh, just a simplification summary of all of this information. So let's say the, be the behaviors of Theodore is he's focused. He's a focused individual and he's focused on delivering, you know, Substance. He's focused on delivering subs substantial change that is effective. Substantial change that is effective in his goals of setting up infrastructure for black. Economic, econo economic, black economic and social freedom. Okay, um, resourceful. He's also, uh, yeah, he's a resourceful, he has that resourceful personality trait. He has that resourceful personality trait, so resourceful, resourceful in utilizing uh, grassroots community efforts, community focus 
efforts. I'm using line grassroots community focus organizations efforts and organizations to build support from the ground up. So he is more of a person that's on the ground and this comes from the likes of our, you know, people that are leaning more towards that uh, Angela Davis side of community work, the Black Panthers and, um, you know, the Nation of Islam. They're more of a community aspect people versus a political like the Nelsons and the, um, and the Barack. So he is more focused on that type of behavior. And then lastly, let's say that he prides himself in having integrity in what he stands for. So this is leaning towards, you know, that original pride that he has in his culture and in heritage. So he's doing that and leaving, he has integrity in leaving also a reputation that stands up to the leaders that he studied and follow after. So we have gotten to a really good point of understanding Theodore Mzanzi, and this is all, you know, summarizing our information and giving us a full reference. We're going to uh, close it off with a tagline. I like that. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is that African proverb of um, if you want to go uh, fast is what it is. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I feel like that encapsulates, you know, the message that Theodore Mzanzi represents. So we have completed our persona and this is going to be our reference going forward as we continue to create. We're going to follow up this with a flow chart that's going to dive more into, you know, um, the details of what this experience could be like. Um, the details, the task, and we're going to dive more into uh, furthering out this aspect of how it would look to reach success going in that more self-sustaining, you know, sovereign uh, approach that we are leaning more towards rather than that unity approach and the decisions, the different paths that could be taken along that way. So this is... Um, Day three of our design sprint, and we're going to continue forward uh, into the flow chart and close off um, once we have a full toolbox that we can go into creating our content for. So thank you guys for, you know, tuning in. Once again, my name is Lucian Lewis. This is The Road to Responsible. We'll be back for more to continue this design sprint. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for more of this journey as we continue forward. Peace.